Hey, welcome back. I'm in the uh, lab today and I'm looking at these power supplies. We're going to try to evaluate these for the use in my battery powered vacuum tube guitar amplifier. So I have two of these. This one here is a 15 watt one that states it's uh, 225 volts. And if I have 18 volts going in, it's uh, supposed to be able to put out 66 milliamps, which is, which is a lot. Now this one here is a 20 watt one. And at 225 volts, this one should put out about 88 milliamps. So we're going to go over to the bench. We're going to connect these guys up. We're going to look at the uh, output waveforms. We're going to look at the noise and the output and see how they do. All right, so let's go over to the bench. Let's look at these and in, in, uh, kind of zoom in on these. So this guy is the 15, the 15 watt one. And it's got a... Uh, 30, uh, 330 microfarad input capacitor and a 10 microfarad 400 volt output capacitor. And um, this is the output voltage trim pot here. Uh, here's the uh, the, the uh, transistor. There's a probably a shock key diode over here. And this is the, the uh, flyback transformer or the high voltage transformer. Uh, pretty simple design. These are both uh, designed for using Nixie tubes. Um, and all the power uh, in and out comes out on this connector down below. So you can see that they have plus 12 ground, high voltage at ground. I measured the, uh, the resistance between these two ground pins and they're connected together. So this is a non-isolated uh, DC to DC converter, which means it has a shared ground between the input and output. All right, well, that's the 15 uh, watt one. The 20 watt one is a little similar, except it splits out the voltage in and voltage out. This, this arrangement here is much safer to do, but it has a lot of different components on it. Now, both of these boards, there's this uh, eight pin. I see here that the um, top has been ground off to hide the, hide the, which controller they're using for this. So, <clears throat> So we don't know that. We're gonna go ahead and hook these up and put a load on them and see how they do. Okay, so this uh, <clears throat> this meter is our DC voltage output. And this is the current. And I have this multi-tap resistor here that is two and a half K per tap. So this, this tap over here is two and a half K. Five, seven and a half, ten, and twelve and a half. So this is a twelve, this twelve point five k resistor with multiple taps on it. All right, here's a twenty volt, volt one. Um, I mean a twenty watt one. This is a twenty watt one, and this is the fifteen watt one. Let's get that straight. So I'm gonna hook this up. I'm running it at eighteen volts off of my bench power supply, and the way this is wired is here's my the, my input voltage is over here. Make sure I did this right. Eight input voltage is over here. My output voltage is over here. And uh, output voltage runs through this ammeter. Then it runs over to this, this voltmeter. And then it runs out to the load. So right now we have a, a 12.5K load on, on this. So what I'm going to do is turn on the DC power supply, which is set at 18 volts. And you can see that we're getting out 240 volts at about 19 milliamps. Okay, so this is the output waveform. You can see we got some pretty big spikes and that looks like that peak, peak to peak on that spikes about 700 millivolts. So let's go in here and measure what the frequency is here. So we'll turn these cursors on. And let this down on manual. And put that cursor right there. So the cursor over here, the peak to peak is 9.7 kilohertz. So that's not too good. We're right in the middle of the audio band and um, can't really change that. So I don't think this 20 watt, um, 20 watt power supply is going to work very well because it's going to be very difficult to filter that out and not really affect the audio performance of our guitar amplifier. So. It's kind of disappointing, but it's all right. Let's uh, 
let's put a let's put a little heavier load on it before I take this apart. Let's put a heavier load on it and see if that frequency changes at all. So we'll go down here to 7.5k. Turn this back on. And now we're up at 237 volts at 31 milliamps. And over here on the scope, what you're seeing is we now have a four volt peak up here. This peak to peak spike is now four volts. So it's drawing more, ultimately it's drawing more current because of that peak there. So if we wanted to get a lot of current out of this power supply, we're going to deal with a lot of, a lot of noise at 7.5 kilohertz. All right, let's, that's, uh, that's, like I said, that was disappointing. And that comes down to the choice of the controller that they used. All right, so this one over here, we want to connect this guy up. Okay. All right, turn this back up, turn this back on again. So this is the 15 watt power supply. So we're at 236 volts at, oh, we, we got to do an apples to apples comparison here. Go back over to 12, 12K load. So we got 237 volts at 18.6 uh, milliamps. So we're on the scope. Let's go back over to the scope and we'll turn this back down. So now we got a kind of a one volt peak to peak here. Let's measure that frequency there. Uh, what do we do here? We got this guy. Oh, we're already kind of lined up there. Ninety five kilohertz. So this is well outside the audio band, which is good, but we do need to take into account that we can't hear it audibly, but the amplifier, because we're using pentodes, may be able to actually amplify this. So we need to be able to uh, have protection, i.e. some capacitance in the uh, amplifier circuit to make sure we don't amplify this at 100 kilohertz. We'll take care of that when the time comes. Let's, uh, let's uh, load this guy up. <clears throat> we'll turn this off. We're going to change our load resistor from 12 and a half to 7.5. So now we're basically up to 31 milliamps at 237 volts. So we really haven't seen a voltage level drop over here. Over here on the scope, we're seeing a little bit higher peak voltage of about 1.2 volts. And we're still at 95 kilohertz, so that's good. All right, let's go a little higher. Because remember now, we should be able to get out about 60 milliamps at 15 watts. So now we're back down to a load of 5K. This went up to 46 milliamps at 236 volts. We're seeing a slight drop in our voltage over here. And we're up to one and a half, 1.4 volts over here. Let's keep going. So this should be double that. We may not be able to drive this Oh, we are able to drive it. Okay. So we're at 233 volts at 90 milliamps. Well, that resistor might be getting pretty hot there. Um, you know, these are big devices, but I don't know what their power, the power rating is. But peak to peak, we're over here at three volts. Um, and I suspect that the, uh, I suspect that the power supply is getting fairly warm. I don't want to run it right here because we're really, running outside, it's like just outside of its power rating, but we are able to get a sustained uh, power output of 230 volts at 90 milliamps. Now, <clears throat> would we ever be doing that? Because remember, we're, we're trying to use one of these guys here. We want to use uh, two of these guys. If I can get this thing focused in here. 
want to use two of these guys. Two SJ7s. Now, if you're a member, uh, well, on the on the uh, input phase, on the on the preamp, you know, we'd probably buy this uh, bias this up about a milliamp, and on the output stage at about 240 volts. If we run this at 240 volts, single ended, we want to bias this up around 10 milliamps. So we're never going to be near this type of load. So this power supply is probably going to work fine for this little amplifier. In fact. If we wanted to run a little bit more power, this thing would still work pretty fun, work pretty well, up to a certain power level. We can't increase the voltage at all, but we can certainly we can certainly increase the um, the current, which is a good thing. All right, to summarize: we have two power supplies here. We looked at uh, these are these were really designed to run Nixie tubes. Uh, this is the 15 watt power supply. Its switching frequency is 95 kilohertz. And we were able to drive 90 milliamps at 230 volts out of this, which is really good. This one over here, unfortunately, is uh, switching frequency is 9.5 kilohertz. So this is kind of right in the high, the high portion of the audio band. And because of the spikes that are involved, this one's going to be really hard to filter out that, that uh, switching frequency. So we are going to use this guy here, the 15 water. I have this uh, link to these down in the description. And that's about it for today. Thanks for watching.